blessings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts and minds to this beautiful deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cement faith and the belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the tenets of our faith within our hearts and minds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be content with the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. As we gather on this blessed day of Jumu'ah, we begin by saying Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That once again our masjid is open. Once again, we're able to come to Salatul Jumu'ah. Other masajid may have been opened. We might have been going to other masajid for Salatul Jumu'ah. But to be able to come to our local masjid, it's, it's, a, it's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a community, as a people, as families, as societies, naturally, people have been going through difficult times over the last few months, over the last year, we could say. People have been going through difficult times and more recently there has been a greater loss that people have felt. And this loss that we feel you know, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in place a mechanism and as believers, if we follow this mechanism, things become easy. And if we distance ourselves from this mechanism, then things become difficult. The Prophet وسلم, reminds us, المؤمن بين الخوف والرجاء, that a believer, a believer will constantly be within the state of hope and the state of fear and sorrow. Yeah, you know. Hope and fear. These are two things that keep us going. But when a believer falls or starts leaning towards fear and starts focusing on fear, then subhanAllah, that's not good for an individual. It's not good for an individual. And, and we, we see it within our communities no, it's people have been inside their homes, people have been within their, their bubbles, within their groups, not being able to meet other people, and it's affecting people. It's affecting people mentally. You know, subhanAllah, yesterday I was talking to an individual and he turns around and he tells me, Mona, I think my father is becoming senile. I Meaning, he's perfectly fine because now when you talk to him, you know, he, he's, he's there but he's not there. He listens to you but he doesn't listen to you. And he's, he says that I feel that, you know, he's been inside the home for over a year, not been going out, maybe meeting a few people here, there, but not, not been going to the masjid, not been going out, no, nothing. Duh, duh, duh. So he goes, it's, it's, it's affecting him. And he goes, he needs to now get out of this. And he goes, I'm actually thinking of, of like, you know, booking tickets for him so that he can go back, um, spend a few months in another country and then come back. Um, but subhanAllah, for us here, we need to understand that we need to focus on the hope part. Hope, what is hope? Hope is what keeps us going. Hope is what keeps us going. You know, subhanAllah, um, in Urdu they say, dunya umid pe chalti hai. Yeah, hope is what keeps us going. And this is what we focus on. Um, no matter what, they, they say hope. Hope is something to look forward to with desire. Yeah, something to look forward to with desire, to move forward with optimism. Um, and this is what keeps us going. You know, subhanAllah, we, we look at the dates, you know, March 8th, the kids go to school, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Yeah, and then he said, okay, March this, uh, April 12th, the shops can open. You know, subhanAllah, restaurants will open. This will ha it's, it's that hope which keeps us going. But subhanAllah, no matter what we're going through, we understand as believers, the difficulties that we face, these are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The minute we understand that this is from my Lord, this is from my Creator, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for me, it becomes easy for us. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Holy Quran, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقَصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ That we will be tested. We will be tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with fear, loss of life, loss of wealth, loss of these bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. You now subhanAllah, there are many people, many people who've lost their parents. Yeah, many people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant maghfirah to all those who have passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant sabr to the families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make their graves from amongst the gardens of Jannah. But you know, the, the ability to process grief even during these difficult times, it's affected us. Normally, you know, when, a, when an individual passes away, the, the, the community coming together, families coming together, we're able to process our grief through, through meeting people, through sitting with family members, through meeting our siblings, etc. But at this moment in time, you know, subhanAllah, siblings haven't been able to meet their siblings. Why? Because they can't fly out. People haven't been able to go to the janazah of their parents. Why? Because they can't fly out to another country. People are looking at the janazah through Zoom. You know, subhanAllah, this is what it's come down to. But understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. And no matter what difficulty we're going through, no matter what difficulty we're going through, there's a saying of Ibn Abbas عن, that when a person goes through difficulties, you know, be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, that this difficulty of mine, it could be greater. It could be something larger. It could be something more, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept it at this. Number two, be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this difficulty of mine is regarding something of the dunya. Yeah? Regarding something connected to my dunya and not something connected to my deen. Because subhanAllah, you know, if it's connected to deen, then that becomes very difficult. Yeah? Whether it's loss of life, whether it's loss of wealth, these are all things connected to our deen. And yes, it's challenging. It's challenging. But Alhamdulillah, our Iman is still secure. Alhamdulillah, you know, the, the faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, it's still secure. And number three, he reminds us that be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this difficult moment is something whilst I'm alive in this dunya and it's not something that I'm being put through in the akhirah. Yeah. Because no matter what we're going through today, if on the day of judgment, we can walk through the events without being reckoned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannatul Fidos Bidun al Hisab without any reckoning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But imagine that difficulty on the day of judgment, standing you know, in the plains of Hashr and then going through a difficult moment. So subhanAllah Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, reminds us that no matter what we're going through in this dunya, um, you know, be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put a positive spin on it. And remember, you know, this, this umid, this hope, it's what keeps us going. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, inna ma'al usri yusra, that indeed after hardship there is ease. Sayyajalullahu ba'da usri yusra. That indeed after hardship there is ease. And our masjid opening up, we getting together like this, Alhamdulillah. You know, we're thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But let this, let this be a first step. Yeah? Um, because on the flip side, as individuals, we have become complacent. We have become complacent. Now we're, we've started the month of Rajab. The month of Rajab is the month that comes before the month of Sha'ban and the month of Sha'ban is the, is the month that comes before the greatest of all months, the month of Ramadan. And Ramadan is on our minds. We are thinking about Ramadan. You know, just today after Fajr, there's a brother that was walking with me. He says, Mona, what's going to happen for Salatul Taraweeh? And I go, that's, that's on what everyone's mind. You know, with this social distancing, how many people are we going to fit in the masjid? You know, normally when it comes to Ramadan and Salatul Taraweeh, the first few days, there isn't even space in the masjid. People have to stand outside. Uh, you know, that's how filled our masajid are. Yeah, even if we take away the children, even if we take away our elders, yeah, what, what are we going to do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. There's no answer. 
There's no answer. Um, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's going to happen. But yes, maybe we will need to start doing tarawih within our homes. And when we talk about doing tarawih within our homes, those homes that have huffal will be able to do this. Yeah. Those homes that don't have huffal, maybe we should start thinking about this. Yeah, maybe we should start thinking about this. Maybe it's time that we start investing in our children. Yeah. Remember, this, the, 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 a hafiz, a hafiz of the Qur'an, the parents on the Day of Judgment will be treated like kings and queens. Yeah. When we take a look at these young children, you know, mashallah, the children that are, that, 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 that are enrolled in a hiv class, yeah, um, what they go through, it's you and I cannot understand. Especially here in these countries, they wake up at six o'clock in the morning, they start learning the Quran, they go to school, they come back from school, five till eight o'clock, they're back in the madrasa, they have to do their homework, they have to eat food. You know, there's, there's no time for them. There's no time for them. Many ustad even call them on Saturday morning, they get called on Sunday morning, they get called during the holidays. You know, they don't, but subhanAllah, they're doing all of this for the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the next time we see a hafiz, let's look at them with a different light. The next time we see a young child that's going to a madrasa and becoming a hafiz, let's look at them with a different light. Let's treat them with respect inshaAllah. But maybe now is the time where we start thinking about creating huffal within our children, within our grandchildren inshaAllah. And remember, for, you know, when, it, when we think about, you know, Hifzul Qur'an, to memorize the Qur'an, it doesn't necessarily have to be the whole Qur'an. Um, just last week, on Saturday, last week on Saturday, I met a 69-year-old person that lives here in Leighton. Yeah, I actually met him down in, in Ilford, Woodford. Yeah, he, he lives here in Leighton. And he said, Mona, make dua for me. He goes, I've started memorizing the Qur'an. He goes, I've three juz hifz kar liye. Yeah, memorized three juz at the age of 69. And that's, that's inspiration for us. Yeah. But subhanAllah, it's not too late. We can start memorizing the Qur'an so that we can lead taraweeh within our homes. We don't have to do the whole Qur'an, but if someone's memorized juz am, if someone's memorized the 29th juz, we can, we can, we can lead Salat al-Taraweeh within our homes, with our families, inshaAllah, and have the intention that if Allah has blessed me with children, then inshaAllah, I will make them huffad of the Qur'an. Make the intention that if, inshaAllah, Allah blesses me with children, then I will make them huffad of the Qur'an. I will make my grandchildren huffad of the Qur'an. And inshaAllah, it's these things that will be of benefit to us, inshaAllah. Allah. You know, let, let us be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, as we go through the month of Rajab. Understand that the month of Rajab is the month of sowing the seed. You know, earlier I said that we've, we've started the month of Rajab. I just realized we've not started the month of Rajab. We're two way through, two thirds through the month of Rajab. Yeah? The month of Rajab is the month of sowing the seed. Right now, we sow the seed for the month of Ramadan so that when the month of Ramadan comes, we're ready. We're already in motion. We don't need to worry about zero to 60. We're already going at 60 and 80 miles an hour. Yeah. So that we're able to maximize from the month of Ramadan. And for us, for the, with the masajid opening, with the schools opening, with some form of normality coming back to our lives, we need to bring that normality back to our life when it comes to the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Because being very honest with you, all of us, we have become complacent. We have become complacent. Over the last year, there have been no talks in the masajid. There has been no events in the masajid. Many, 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 many weeks the masjid has been closed. You know, people, people, even when we take a look at the numbers in the masajid, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, but if we're to remove the social distancing, the numbers would go down very little. Yeah. What, what, how many people come for Salatul Fajr? How many people are coming for Salatul Isha? Yeah, we need to step up inshallah. We need to step up. We need to push ourselves right now inshallah. We don't push ourselves on the first day of Ramadan when the moon is sighted. No, we start pushing ourselves from today inshallah so that we're ready. 
We're ready for when the month of Ramadan comes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, allow us to start preparing ourselves for the month in, in this month of Rajab. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to start preparing ourselves for the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, remove the difficulties from our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to look forward to the future. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the future be blessed for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the future be full of barakah for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our coming together. I'll call you how the festival. Inna huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim.